Okay, let's start section B, which starts with question seven. This question is on a cubic, which is fairly standard for a paper one paper. So let's see what, the, what information is given, which can help us in answering our questions. So it says in the diagram below, the graph of a cubic function is shown. Fantastic. Zero is origin, right? And it says R and S represent the X coordinates of two of the X intercepts of the graph. So there they are there, right? But they haven't given us this X intercept there. It's okay, right? But we just don't know what it is at this point. A and B represent stationary points of the graph. Happy, right? And then it says P and Q are the Y values of the represented um, of the respective stationary points B and A of the graph. So basically P and one give us the coordinates of B and Q and negative four give us the coordinates of A. It says all answers can be written in terms of these um, variables and the numerical values given. Our first question is one that I think it could cause anxiety for a lot of students, but let's talk through it. It says for which values of X is F dashed of X, which is basically the gradient less than zero. Translated into English, it's saying, where is the gradient of this graph negative? And this is what it looks like when we know that a gradient is negative visually. So what I've done is I've drawn arrows onto this graph to show us. There's a negative gradient, there's a positive gradient, there's a negative gradient. So our negative gradient is anything where x is smaller than negative 4. It doesn't include 4. Why? Because at 4 it equals 0. Are we allowed to include 0 as part of our, our um, question? No. So it's anything less than negative 4. Over here, it's anything greater than 1, right? So those are our two places where our derivative is less than 0, being negative. In between negative 4 and 1, we have a positive gradient. Right. Let's now look over here. It says, draw a sketch on the grid provided of the derivative f dash of x, indicating only the x-intercepts of the graph. Now, you should know that when we get the derivative of a cubic graph, it's a parabola. When we get the derivative of a parabola, it's a straight line, right? These are things you should know. So this is basically asking us to draw a graph representing the change in gradient for this cubic graph. We know that here it's negative, right? We know that here it's positive and here it's negative, okay? Where does it change from being positive to negative? At negative four and one. So those are gonna be our critical values. So over here at 1, right, and over here at negative 4, right? Between these two values, it's positive. Below these two values, it's negative. So over here, I'm just going to draw this like this, because that's negative, right? We know that this here, this is basically saying, this is where f dashed of x, right, where it's less than, and this is where f dashed of x is greater than. Okay. Now what's important here is we kind of have to find where our turning point is in order to draw this. How do we find our turning point for a parabola? It's always halfway between our two x-intercepts. So halfway between negative 4 and 1 is going to be negative 1 and a half. So it's probably going to be over here somewhere. right? So we know that that's going to be where our turning point is. right? If you don't believe me, put this into your calculator. Right? You literally say the distance is 5, it's 5 units. If I go from negative 4 to 1, it's 5 units. 5 divided by 2 gives me 2.5. And, and then I basically track from 1, 2.5 units to get to negative 1.5. Okay, so we know that's where our turning point is. We can't give exactly what our y value is for our turning point, but we can basically just draw this in here and that is kind of what we're looking for. Not a perfect graph, but it only asked us to, it to indicate the x-intercepts, didn't ask us to indicate the y-intercepts, right? So even this, you're not gonna get any, any marks for. You'll get a mark for the shape, and you'll get a mark for each of those. Okay, so don't stress about that. 